A lot of ink has been spilled, or the video equivalent thereof, on auctioning in board games. This central mechanic that oh so many games have been based on is curious in that many of the very pillars of the genre are decades old. But QE here is one of the great modern implementations of auctioning, a really good game that just emphasizes at its central core this minimalistic auction design with a really clever for an inventive implementation that stands contrary to its predecessors while squarely being an auction game. And we haven't covered it yet on the channel, which is why we are covering it as part of this review leading up to spoilers. We're talking about the expansion commodities. But first, let's get a baseline for what is QE so that way we have some context for what makes the expansion oh so remarkable. So QE is a game that stands for quantitative, doing some research on the computer here, a term that stands for quantitative easing. You as players are countries that are bailing out corporations that are too big to fail during the 2008 recession, the absolute crash that was devastating for so many reasons and many companies were bailed out as such. Now, that's already a cheeky theme for what is a very cheeky game because you have this stack of corporations affiliated to different industries and countries, which you can get bonus points for collecting different sets or collecting companies that are affiliated with your country or for your secretly assigned bonus industry. And the way the game works, the major thrust of it and the central gimmick is that the auction player, which rotates from round to round, flips over the top tile so everyone can see its point value, its country, its industrial uh, affiliation, then they set their opening bid, what they are willing to pay for it. Then all other players on their wonderful dry erase boards write down secretly what they're willing to bid, pass that amount over to the auctioner, and the auctioner looks at all of the bids as well as their public bid, and then decides who's the winner. If another player won, then they take the tile. They write down the amount that that person paid. They secretly hand that to the winner without revealing how much they paid, and then push all the boards back to their respective players. If the auctioner won, then they write down publicly what they paid for it, and then keep that token in front of them. And how are you spending money? How much are you willing to bid? Well, that's the thing about the game is no amount is too much in QE. You can set up any amount. There is no finite currency that you have. You're not checking how much you're able to spend. You can spend $7 or $70 or $700 or $7 billion if you want to, which is hilarious and awesome and a huge part of the game. See, the way you calculate the winner of the game is the point accumulation through these various sets that you're building up, the points listed on the tokens, how much you got that was affiliated with your country or financial sector, but the player who paid the most money throughout the game, tracked by the tokens that they have accumulated on the back of them, is knocked out of the running. They cannot win. So as you play, you are wondering how much other people paid in order to win those tokens, and only the auctioner gets to know how much people paid, and the auctioner is rotating, so you have very little information, but what you do have is how much the auctioner was willing to pay and whether or not you won. It creates this incredible social deduction cat and mouse among players where you're like, I think that they think that they think that I think, and I know this, and they know that, and if they do this, and then I do that, it's this dis dizzying circular logic that is hilarious and awesome and so enjoyable, especially because you can pay any amount of money. Of course, the auctioner kind of sets the tone with a smaller amount of money. Maybe they say $700 or $7,000 or whatever, but that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the game after that first auction. It's hilarious. It's clever. It's interesting. It is fun and it is minimalistic, presented beautifully with these great components. If you like auction games, then QE is a game you need to check out. But there is something holding it back from being just an unequivocally great game. It is a very good game, but there is a certain situation you can get into where you want to bid low 
because you don't care about winning the thing. You want other people to pay out money. You don't need to compete in something, and that kind of takes away the intrigue and interest for a turn. Also, as the auctioner, you don't always know exactly what you want to do as far as setting up the opening bid. So there's this, this feeling that as long as you know that someone else is really going to desire something, you can just kind of let them have it or goad them into paying. And that is where commodities comes in. This is an expansion that expansions so hard. Doing the expansion thing to make a good game into a great one. So commodities adds three sets of commodity tiles that are scooped up by the second player in each auction. You have gold, which is the most valuable of the commodities, but if the gold market is entirely depleted before the end of the game, then each gold token is worth three fewer points. You have oil, which is great. It's not quite quite as valuable as gold, but if you had the most of it, you've cornered the market and you get a bunch of bonus points. And then there's crypto because, you know, crypto bros need some representation in board games, I guess, in a cheeky sort of way. It could be worth zero or it could be worth the most 10 points, which is awesome, but also really risky for you to invest in crypto and has no other inherent value or, you know, collectability or sort of rules associated with it. You know, it's crypto. I have a hard enough time tracking what's going on with that stuff in real life, let alone in a board game. The way that this is implemented into the game is that when someone wins an auction, they get the corporation token as normal, but the second place player gets a commodity token of their choice using the value of their second place bid, just like it was one of the corporations. But the other exchange here is that the auctioner gets the benefit. They get paid for the amount that the commodity winner paid for that commodity. They made a sale. So if you had a second place bid of $6,000 that got you a commodity, then the auctioner gets to make a credit on their account of $6,000 that then reduces the amount that they've spent. So that way you can kind of do this ebb and flow and dance with that sort of dodging and weaving to avoid getting knocked out of the final placement. It's brilliant. It emphasizes the already best parts of QE, that sort of social deduction meets auctioning that is so potent and makes it feel so unique, and then fills in the gaps. The gaps are filled. Suddenly you care about what you're bidding in every bid, even if you're intending to get second place. Sometimes you want to get second place and you feel disappointed when you got first place because you were trying to goad someone else into getting something. You also, as the auctioner, care so much more about what position you put yourself in because if you get a commodity sale, that can be really meaningful, but you want a substantial chunk of change. You want people to pay out for those commodities. On the other hand, if you win the commodity sale as the auctioner, you don't get that price reduction, but you do get the commodity. So there's, again, some sort of mental arithmetic that goes into figuring out how you want to position yourself. There's hardly any overhead. It feels totally organic within the original system, such that even though they are by different designers, I feel like they should be packaged as one game going forward. It knocks it out of the park that much more. This is what I think expansions can really bring to our hobby in taking a good game and making it better and emphasizing the great things that are already great about it. If you like auctioning and social deduction, especially as presented in minimalistic games, then it is hard pressed to find something better than QE along with commodities. It's hilarious, it's Spartan, it is fun. And that is our review. But let us know, what are your favorite expansions that absolutely feel like killer expansions that heighten all the best parts or resolve some of the weak parts of the game that it's made for? And what are your favorite auction games? I wanna hear all about it. Put it in the comments below. And thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, thanks for doing all of the amazing community things. You know I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.